Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's words to you today. Wow, it's a week of blessing. You know what? God loves you. I know it. Even you can't tell me otherwise, praise God. I, listen, it doesn't matter your experience. I know that God loves me. Yes, he loves me. He loves you too. How do you know he loves me? Oh, by the words he sends me to bring to you. Praise God. I know. You know, sometimes you're praying for people. Maybe somebody says, this guy is so bad. This guy is so written off. And then you pray for the person. And then the Lord begins to open your eyes to see how wonderful he's made that person. And you begin to pray and pray. And you see the person, you can't even re remember all the bad and negative things they told you about him. Now that's why prayer is important. Praise God. So Paul says, no, we know man after the flesh. Why did he say that? Because sometimes when you hear about people from other people's perspective, you are getting to know them after the flesh. And sometimes even when you watch people behave, you, you are getting to know them after the flesh. The most important way to know people is by the Spirit of God. Can we call for that daily bread right now? Are you ready? Say, Father, I receive now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, hey, it's the last day of the month of June. Praise God. Whoa, what an exciting month. And here, see, the Spirit of God is telling me that the month of July is the month of blessing. Yes, I'm telling you that already today. Praise God. It's the month of blessing. And now that's why, you know, doing this broadcast the whole week and God have just been, hey, bless, bless, bless. He is getting you ready for the month of July. Praise God. Now, just imagine what July is going to be like. Every day you will wake up with thoughts of blessing. Praise God. And that's, that's the reason why I'm inviting you to our prayer meeting beginning from tonight. And, and, and we're going to be fasting and praying according to the watches till the last watch, which is 9 p.m. tomorrow. So we're starting a prayer meeting 12 midnight tonight. And it's, all the meetings are going to be via Zoom. So we're going to pray at each watch. We're going to pray for 40, 50 minutes. And, and then the first watch is midnight. And then after midnight, we'll have at 3 a.m. And then 6 a.m. And 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And the final watch is by 9 p.m. I don't want you to miss it. Praise God. The Zoom ID number is on your screen and the pass passcode is on your screen. Join us, save it, and plan for this one. Praise God. Join us and let, let us enter into the month of July full of blessing thoughts, ready to just unleash and receive everything that God is giving to us. I don't want you to miss it. Praise God. So I'll be watching out to see you tonight at 12 midnight via Zoom. Don't forget that. Praise God. So, hey, yesterday, God led me to speak to men. And listen, the society will be strong if the men are strong. The society will be great if the men are great. Now, let me tell you this. You may not have had a very good background, but you get to a certain age in life where you fully become responsible for every action and decisions you take. You, have, you, have, you may have made mistakes in the past. Hey, today, the decisions you are making shouldn't be based on those mistakes. 
As of today, those mistakes you have made are just mere informations in your mind. I'm telling you the truth. That's how Satan controls the lives of people. Satan cannot force you to do anything. And neither can he force trouble on your life. I want you to hear me and hear me good. The best Satan can do is to suggest to you. Your life is the sum total of the decisions you make. You're responsible for the outcome of your life. If you make good decisions, your life will end good. And don't tell me, oh, I've made bad decisions all my life. Today, today, you can start changing that. How? Turn around, repent, and start making the right decisions. So ask yourself first, why did I make the wrong decisions? You will tell, you will remember. Oh, I made it out of pressure. I made it out of, you see? Now those things were influences that came into your life. They truly did not stop you from making the right decisions. But you looked at them. And because your eyes were on those pressures, those challenges, those peers that you had, you took the decisions to please or to suit them. It was still your decision to make. Because in the midst of all that, you, can, you could still have made the right decision. You knew the right decisions to make. You knew. But you allowed pressure to make you make the wrong decisions. Because I tell you this, God is ever faithful. He is ever faithful. No matter the pressure on your life. Most times when there is so much pressure in our life, God stands aside and he's watching. So why didn't he help? He wanted to see what you would do. It is what you do that will determine how God will help you. It is the decision you make. Hey, but, but he shouldn't have allowed me to enter that court. No, no. You remember Abraham. One day, Abraham noticed that his headsmen and his nephew's headsmen, Lot, they were beginning to strive. And then Abraham looked at the whole situation and he, he called Lot over. I said, hey, Lot, let there be no strife between you and I. So here is my decision. The land is before you. Now, Abraham was the uncle Lot was the nephew, meaning Abraham was much senior to Lot. So Abraham said, let's not strive. The land is before you. If you choose right, I will choose left. If you choose left, I will choose right. You choose first. Now Abraham took that decision to end strife. It was a decision he made. Now, the normal flow of events, I want you to follow this now. The normal flow of events would have been that Abraham would say, Lot, I don't want us to strive. So you know what we're going to do? I'm your uncle. I'm going to divide the land. And from henceforth, this is going to be your portion. From this right end down to this side, I'm giving it to you. Is that okay? So tell your people they should not cross over to this side. Abraham could have done that. But you know the truth, if he had done that, it wouldn't have ended the strife. Because whatever Lot faces, maybe challenge, they would blame it on Abraham. He say, Uncle, you're the one that told me to go this way. See, now I'm suffering. It's your fault. Now that's how human beings are. So when Abraham looked at it, though he was the uncle, he chose to put himself in a place of disadvantage because he wanted to end anything that would produce strife. Sometimes it's important to have such foresight. But you see, the secret of Abraham was his knowing, his knowledge that God was with him. That was his secret. He knew that God was with him. 
So Abraham told Lot, choose. And Lot actually chose. If he was smart, he should have thrown the thing back to his uncle Abraham and said, no, uncle, you're the elder here. You choose for me. See, not even telling him, uncle, you choose first. Nah. He said, uncle, choose for me. Anywhere you tell me to go, I'll be fine with it. And Abraham would have told Lot what to do. And he would have been blessed. But you see, he told Lot, Lot, choose. And Lot chose. And guess what? The Bible said Lot looked and saw the green of Sodom. It looked so beautiful. And he said, uncle, that's the one I want. So meaning, despite the fact that it was his uncle that gave him that leeway to choose, he actually became greedy and he chose the best. And his uncle didn't tell him, stupid boy. No, he said, is that what you want? He said, yes, that will be okay for you. Yes, sir. He said, all right. All my servants gather here. From today, this is Lord's portion. As he's going in this direction, none of you should cross. Is that okay? I bet you Lot was smiling and say, yes. You know, I knew this day would come where there will be a separation. Thank God my uncle has allowed me I've chosen the best. I will never suffer in my life again. But guess what the Bible said? And that's why I'm sharing this story with you. The Bible said, the moment Lot departed from Abraham, God showed up. The moment Lot departed from Abraham, God showed up. And what did God say when he showed up? He said, Abraham, stand up. Now I want you to look north, south, east, west, as far as your eyes can see, I have given it to you. Wow. Praise God. That's to tell you that when that whole thing was going on, God was watching, but he was silent. Why was he silent? I've, I've taught Abraham. I've walked with Abraham. Now let me see. If he has my attitude in him, if he has my character in him, let me watch and, and, and see how he's going to navigate this situation. And Abraham navigated it, proving one thing, that he trusts in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, God, many times when you go through challenges, tough decisions to make, God is silent. He's not silent because he's not there. At that time, he really wants to see the decision you will make. You may look and think, this one God has not helped me till now. I better help myself. You just show that you don't believe that he is there. It was after Abraham had Lot had Abraham and Lot made their decisions that God showed up. What did he show up to do? He didn't show up, hey, 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 Lot, come. Abraham, come. Abraham, you made the wrong decision. Lot, stupid boy, I'm going to deal with you. No, no, no. He went to the one who took the right decision. Abraham. And what did he do to him? He didn't say, leave that stupid boy. Think at easy. No, no, he didn't talk about Lot. He said, Abraham, come. Yes, sir. He said, can you stand here? Abraham, he said, now look, not. He looked not. Look very well. He looked. Now look south. He looked south. Can you see anything? Um, I'm quite wondering. Now I want you to look again. North, south, east, west. I hear me. As far as your eyes can see, I have given it to you. Say so sometimes when you have to take that decision and you look at it and look, the best thing for me to do now that will please God because I know God is here. Don't take any decision thinking you have to help yourself because God is watching. He's watching. When it comes to things like that, to avoid strife, God will be silent. I'm telling you, He's silent. You know why God is silent? Number one, strife is brewing. And where there's strife and envy, God will shift from that place. So you can't hear His voice at that time. So what do you do? Deal with the strife. Then the voice of God will come. I'm telling you the truth. And when it comes, it comes for you who refuse to enter into strife. 
But if you think you're going to fight it and argue it and win, ah, now I've won. Oh, Father, I give you glory. He will not answer. He will not answer. Because he will never be part of a victory that came from the place of strife. Hear me, brothers and sisters. We're entering a month of blessing. Today, get rid of everything that causes strife in your heart. Get rid of it. Get rid of everything that causes bitterness in your heart. Get rid of it. If you need to apologize to somebody, please make that call today. Hey, but, but I'm not the one that did wrong. He's the one that did wrong. Yes, but there's strife right now between the two of you. Break it. Break it. Make the call. Do the visitation. Hey, I know you really offended me and, and there was a misunderstanding, but you know what? I don't like this thing going on between us. I love you very much. And this shouldn't be happening to us. Hey, let the person come to me. Hey, be the one. Because the one who breaks it is the one God is going to speak to. Be smart. Be smart. Because that's how God is going to release his blessing to you. Praise God. Oh, my time is up. Ah, so much to share. But I pray the Spirit of God will help you and give you understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see you tonight. I want to see you tonight. Join us and you will never regret this. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Bye.